Hi, I'm David. Welcome to another episode of Changing Times. Our guest is Steve McFarlane. He's the co-owner of Fashion Hub Liverpool. We're finding out how they've been able to adapt their business and lifestyle to the current pandemic. Please enjoy and stay safe. Hi, Steve. How's everything going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, nice to uh, catch up with you on Zoom. Yeah, everyone's doing it now, though, aren't they? Everyone's got Zoom in their life. Yeah, social and business. I know people are using other products as well, but I find this very easy to use. Yeah. So, first of all, tell everyone, what what is your business? What's your profession? What do you do? Okay. Well, uh, up until about two years ago now, my main day job was all in uh, technology. Uh, with a bit of uh, uh, singing and recording and writing and stuff in the background. But for the last uh, couple of years, I've uh, been involved in a, a big project uh, with my uh, husband, Gary, uh, on the Fashion Hub, uh, which is part of the regeneration of the Fabric District, yeah. uh, just uh, north of uh, Lime Street. And there we have a, a cafe and bar, an event space, uh, a set of uh, incubator hubs and offices largely supporting businesses that are in some way connected to fashion, performance, that kind of thing. That's amazing. So obviously everything changed with the lockdown and pandemic and everything. So how has everything affected that and yourselves? Well, very significantly. I mean, if we look just at our, uh, uh, let, let's call it our kind of own day-to-day -day stuff that we were involved in, uh, the cafe, bar, and events have all gone uh, because the, the, the basically we had to put the entire place on, uh, yeah. on lockdown. So any of our, our um, uh, bar and event activity, be it our own or indeed uh, some of the private things that we're running, um, all had to uh, stop and be postponed. Um, so that's had a significant impact on the income that we were generating for the business because we were, on the other side, our tenants equally also on lockdown, and we were really subsidising the rents that we were charging them by being able to generate income from the cafe and bar. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a double whammy, if you will. So there's, there's, you know, we're not seeing a great deal in terms of rental income and nothing from what would be there from our events. So do you feel a bit concerned about when everything goes back to the new normal, um, you being able to support them business more than like you was? Well, yeah, I, I think so, uh, David, to be honest. We've got... Um, uh, a few things that we've, we've started implementing and we'll maybe touch on that in a second. But it's, you know, one of the things is, well, what will the new normal look like? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm already expecting, although I'm not involved in the government, I'm already expecting us to have months, if not a, a further year, of disruption to all things in the hospitality industry. Yeah. So, you know, be that hotels or bars or cafes, restaurants, everything. So I think there will be continued uh, disruption and changes within the industry overall because of some need to still have an element of uh, social distancing. Yeah. It's just a, a strange time. So what, have, what changes and have you been able to reflect on what you you had before lockdown and have you made any plans for the future to to get it back to normal yeah i've got it these are good questions you know you're you're really uh put me on the spot here <laughs> well, there's a, but there's a couple of things i'll tell you that we've done um we started doing uh deliveries food deliveries so our cafe and bar uh, uh clearly was no longer open to the public but we know we've got a functioning kitchen. Uh, yeah. We've got some great staff, uh, and uh, a couple of them in particular, rather than having them furloughed, um, find a way of, of using their skill set at the same time as saying, 
let's see if we can then build up uh, yeah. more or less what we're doing from scratch. And I'm pleased to say it's, uh, you know, so far, touch a little bit of wood for luck here. Um, so far, that side of things has worked extremely well. Um, so we've, we've only been uh, doing it now for not quite four weeks. And we can see the, the level of orders. We're predominantly doing breakfasts and lunches, but the level of orders are slowly climbing. Yeah. And to go back to your previous question, we will certainly continue with some of that as we go into, you know, post, post uh, 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 following and, and isolation. The other thing that we've done, uh, uh, really through uh, Gary's creative uh, um, uh, genius, I would call it, really, is uh, we've set up a, he has set up a website called omgwelovethese.com. So, oh my God, we love these.com. OMG, we love these.com. And he's done that uh, on a combination of things. One is to generate some potential income for the business. Yeah. But secondly, and I think uh, probably more importantly, he's using it as a means of supporting uh, several charities and uh, local groups that we know need our help. So we're doing a bit for the NHS. We're doing a bit uh, that he started out doing for... Um, St. Vincent School for the Visually Impaired uh, uh, launched a whole range of, of T-shirts for them. And he, he really started it off by doing some uh, uh, pieces for St. George's Hall. So that, again, we will see continuing and we'll probably expand it beyond T-shirts and hoodies yeah. into a whole other set of... It goes nicely with what we already have as the Fashion Hub. We'll start doing more and more um, uh, fashion and accessories using that uh, using that site, and and somebody that works for us has been doing the the good old masks masks, and she very kindly did these ones in tartan. They have a the little pocket for your filter to go in the inside, but uh, yeah, so the tartan ones uh, 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 she's doing and and going from strength to strength with that as well. So so we'll see those sort of things definitely continue. That's amazing because we, what, what we've noticed too in these interviews that a lot of businesses have adapted to, to something that they never knew their business could adapt to. So it's great that you've got so many different avenues that you can adapt to. Yeah. So what positives can you take, take from all this? What are you going to be looking at going... It was hard time, but I got a lot out of it. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, um, I am, I tend to be an optimist, and, and uh, both Gary and I will always look for the good to come out of something uh, that, that is bad or certainly less good, uh, depending on one's, one's outlook. So we'll always try to make the best of what's happening and say we've got to try in some way to either cope or get on with it, or even better, is there something positive you can do that, that goes beyond it? And I think that's something, uh, but I, I've, I've had this throughout my, my kind of business life, really, David, is uh, because I've worked in both small and large uh, companies, and uh, the ability to adapt, so your adaptability, becomes key whenever there are things that impact your business. You know, whether it is, acquisition, whether it is the company going through redundancies, whether it's the sort of thing that we're going through now, you have to adapt and then say, okay, we'll figure something out beyond this. Well, that's it. So how have you been? How has Gary been? How have you been keeping your, your spirits up? Well, uh, uh, we did. We, we've not done one in, a, in about a week, but we'll, we'll probably start on them again at, uh, at the weekend. We, we've been doing little fun videos that we've shared with a whole, whole raft of people. I'm sure you might have seen one or two of them. Uh -huh. um, it was partly just to give us a bit of a laugh as much as anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we were surprised at how many people are saying, well, this has made my day and things. So, so we definitely need to go back into doing a few more of those. Um, Gary, because he has a, a, a few uh, uh, health issues occasionally, he's uh, stayed 
uh, at the house. I, th- I think uh, he's only been out once in the entire the entire time, uh, which for him is now getting. I think it's about six weeks for for Gary all told. Um, I've been going out and doing shopping, but you know, choosing my time and definitely wearing a mask and ensuring that I, I keep the, the the social distance thing happening. Um, but outside of that, uh, uh, you know. Uh, as I say, getting on with things, things like this type of technology has been a, a godsend. It really has because being able to stay in touch with friends uh, uh, and importantly get in touch with, with family north of the border and things has been extremely good. And I'll tell you very quickly, one of the things that we did uh, uh, just last, last week, week before, uh, we did a little Eurovision using this very technology, using Zoom. So I had set up our friends and Gary to be judges, and I was acting as MC. And I picked uh, half a dozen of the worst songs from Eurovision. Purely my opinion, so I won't tell anybody on this video (laughs) who it was. But we did, you know, we we had, uh, from around Europe, we had some terrible, terrible songs. And I was able to play the videos for everybody to watch, and then they gave their opinions. But seeing their facial expressions when they're trying to be judges uh, was hysterical. And I think that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about laughter. And, and I think it's brought the com- a community of people together again. But I can't Completely. watch that. Well, you know, it's funny, again, you say that because uh, I have been doing uh, the odd bit of shopping as well as uh, little food parcels for a friend of ours who, again, for health reasons, has to stay isolated. Yeah, and uh, he's only around the corner from us. But I go round and, and drop off uh, stuff for him. One of his neighbours, when they were first announcing lockdown, one of his neighbours who he'd only seen occasionally just to say hello, that was it, knocked on his door and had said, "You give me a spare set of keys, and uh, just put a note through my door if you need any shopping or anything. But if I've got keys, I know you're okay." Yeah. Well, nobody, particularly in a, in a block of uh, uh, apartments in the city centre, nobody would have done that before. And, and it, you know, to, I can see you're smiling at that. I'm the same. I find that incredibly encouraging. And, uh, you know, people more inclined to be uh, pleasant and to be outgoing to, uh, to others that they may, may meet, even if they're on opposite side of the street, just, a, you know, a good morning or a good afternoon. It's fantastic. So that's a very positive thing to see. No, it is. And I, I, I hope that continues with people. And only time will tell, I suppose. And as long as... Fingers crossed, David. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So how is everything going for yourself? How are you? are you doing have you realized anything about yourself that you didn't realize have you learned anything about yourself uh yeah yeah i i i've taken to the gin (laughs) (laughs) so um uh, again a tip for anybody that sees this uh, david is uh slice uh, slice an orange into wedges put the wedges in your freezer and they're better than ice cubes in any any form of drink and soft drinks too. I might add, uh, is great. Um, I'll tell you one of the key things is I mean I've always loved cooking, always loved it, but uh, we we used to rely on either going out for for dinner or doing uh, uh, takeaway food, and I would probably only cook twice a week. Yeah. Uh, now I'm cooking almost all the time. We're we're maybe having one. You know, if we're just in the mood for it, we have maybe one takeout meal every couple of weeks. And the rest of the time, I'm coming up with dishes, but I'm always trying to say, I, want, I don't want it just being the same as we do each time. Uh, make sure I'm being kind of creative with, with what we're doing. Do you, are you, do you find that slowing down will change your attitude on going forward? Are you going to be more going to slow yourself down, not going to be more all into work and spend more time at home? Uh, I, I think there's an element of that. I mean, I, I had uh, basically taken uh, semi-retirement when, when I uh, finished in my, uh, my IT job, as I say, two years ago now. Um, and um, I'd always had the intention to at least slow down a little bit. 
yeah. and maybe do a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, in the community as well as keeping an eye on what we were doing at the fashion hub and things. But um, we may have to, and I was hoping Gary was doing the same, but we may have to just postpone that for a further 12 months. Uh, not on my part, but on his. Yeah. Uh, because um, he was due to step down as a councillor, and of course we were due to have local elections this week today, I think, in fact. And the elections were postponed. They've not postponed them till the winter. They've postponed them right through till next year. Wow. And, and Gary, being the sort of person he is, along with a couple of other councillors that were stepping down, they've all agreed to stay on. So they're doing the full 12 months. Yeah. So, so we've got another year uh, uh, where he will, you know, and I knew he would do it anyway. It's important to help, um, as he says, Old Swan, the, the people of Old Swan, because it's the gateway to Merseyside. I, I'm, I'm just checking. I've got that right. The gateway, the gateway to Liverpool, and um, he knows that there are people that that need the support, and they couldn't afford to be with just a, yeah. a couple of councillors helping them. So he'll continue doing that through till next May. Then we might get the opportunity to just slow down a bit further. So, where can people find you? How can people look up Fashion Hub, the cafe, anything? Yeah, so you can get, if you just look up FH Liverpool or Fashion Hub Liverpool, you'll see it on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I'll tell you, a young person, although I use Facebook quite a lot, a young person said to me, oh, yes. Facebook, that's for the old people. Oh. <laughs> I, just, I thought, well, I did. yes, right. So I'm not in their demographic and I probably fit more in the old demographic. But we're on all three. And uh, you can get me at steve at fhliverpool.uk is the best way to get me in, in matters relating to the Fashion Hub or steve mcfarlane at me.com. Amazing. So if there was one thing that you wanted to share with everyone, a, a message or an inspirational line, what would you want to say? Um, continue to, uh, uh, you know, until uh, things change, stay home, stay safe, definitely, uh, uh, you know, protect the NHS and save lives. That's uh, absolutely vital. And I would say continue to make the most of what you've got currently. You know, everyone is in some form of restriction, but make the most of it. And we'll all come out of this better on the other side. No, oh, that's brilliant. And thank you very much for your time, Steve. It's a pleasure. All right. Hope to see you soon when Keep the madness up. ends. We will. And we'll Take it easy. for the fashion hub. Great stuff. Thanks, Dave. Right. Take it easy. Nice Bye. talking to you.